In episode 8 of The Fall of the House of Usher, which was titled The Raven, which is based on the classic story about a person's grief over losing their beloved. As we see what happened in 1980, as Roderick and his sister Madeline seize a chance to submit their fortune, but for a price, as decades later the remaining Ushers reckon with the consequences. As we open this finale with the moment Vera brought Roderick back to life and goes over the stats and the high number of people that he and his drug have killed or have affected negatively, as the drug was supposed to change the world for the better. She informs him that his sister tried to loophole her by telling him that taking his own life would end this deal, a sign of bad faith. As Roderick thinks that he can buy his way out of this by saying to her, what is her price? As there are just a few transactions left, as the opening bell has rung and she vanishes, but Rod Pass, that's been behind this stone wall, gives him one nice scare. Back with Lenora, Pym has arrived and tells her that her statements to the police will be torn apart and it's time for her to go with the statement that he's made for her. Lenora doesn't care about her her father's swinging vote or the company, she only is concerned about her mother. As she states the facts are that he tortured her mom, he was on drugs, and he got himself killed. As she looks the Pym Reaper in his eyes and tell him to stay as far away from her mother as possible as she makes another statement to the police. Meanwhile, Madeline walks into Fortunato to find her brother alive, but there's no time to have an awkward conversation about what happened and how he's alive as the board has elected to replace him with Madeline as the new CEO. As he's lost his children, now his company, but do Pym still doesn't believe he's seen him get his justice he deserves, not quite yet. Rod tells Dupin that he believed he was more like his recently deceased daughter Tam, as she once shared a lot of the best traits that Norris has, but over the years, he choked it out of her. As he details what happened to the kids after Annabelle left him, he waited till he had enough money to eventually take them away from her by showing them what life would look like by flashing money at them, and of course they took it. The money killed any goodwill from them that they got from their mother, as we learn that Annabelle Annabelle couldn't live without them and eventually died of a broken heart. Roderick sees the spirit of Annabelle who's at this funeral to mourn their kids who at one point were once innocent. As we see her sitting in the last row and he walks over to her to talk to her as she tells him what she would tell people if they ask how did he manage to take the kids away she would tell him he was rich. He fooled them with his greed something that she knows she couldn't compete with but she knew he was actually just starving them over and over again so that they kept coming back and needed him to survive to feed his ego which led to their demise. As she looks through this rich man's eyes and sees a poor man as she says to him that maybe their children died at childhood. Cut to the moment Robert came home after betraying August's trust during the trial as Annabelle doesn't know who he's become feels like she made up this version of who she thought he was as we see him reciting the Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe, a poem that explores the theme of the death of a beautiful woman. Cut back to the moment he fell on the ground after episode 1 as the raven looks down upon him as it is time. Cut back to Dupin wanting the confession from Roderick as we flash back to the night of 1980 shortly before Roderick and his sister Madeline met Verna. They went to the company party first and they're greeted with joy by Rufus who calls Rod his hero and we see the rest and the employees celebrate him after his actions in the trial. Rufus names him his right hand man and already went ahead and shared the news with all the higher ups and also told him that the whole idea of the trial was his own. Anywhere that he goes, Rod's gonna tag along. He has his complete trust, which is exactly what Madeline told him to do. As they give him a special bottle of the wine of Montalato, which is of course the reference to the short story of the cast of Mascalato, which I detailed in my episode 1 breakdown. A story about a man taking fatal revenge on a friend who he believes insulted him. Their plan is in motion, we watch Madeline take him down to the basement as she leads him to thinking she's taking him up on his offer from the last time they met in his office. As she plays hard to get and makes him walk towards her, he realizes he can't walk at all because the wine that he drank was tampered with and he passes out. Cut to him being tied up and Madeline and Rod cementing him behind the wall. As they say this is all for the good of the company, they're personally handling the man with all the crimes from the grave robbing to destroying lives themselves. Rufus has done the legwork to put Roderick in line to replace him as CEO and Madeline as COO as they put the final touches on their you are so small wall. We now know who was behind the wall this whole time and who the jester was who was introduced at the end of episode 1. This is the definition to 
me of a mystery with a perfectly crafted plot payoff as they murdered their first victim and they set their sights on their alibi. Back to their sit down with Verna at the bar as she asked them what they would be willing to do to become who we saw them become throughout this show. As Verna calls them killers and tells them that she knows what they did to Rufus and she knows their whole plan. As they're sitting outside of time and space, she details their future including no legal consequences for their whole life. Luck meets opportunity, but of the cost of the next generation, as the deal is that their bloodline must die, but also they must die together. They chose for the ushers to live a shorter life of having everything they ever could imagine versus a life of agony and pain. Now just a brief moment, I want to pose this question to you all listening or watching this video. If you were given this exact opportunity, put in the comments right now, what would you do? As they agreed to make this deal over drinks, the same ones that Rod had since the start of the conversation with Dupin. They drink to the House of Usher as they walk out and turn around and find that that bar never existed. This is the moment that Rod confesses to Dupin, as after years of that moment happening, they believed that it was all a dream, but shortly after that, that's when they began to build their Usher empire. Cut to seeing Pym at their childhood home to complete his task of locating and handling Verna with full authority to destroy her by any means possible. As we see him like a professional, poison her and tie her up, all for her to reappear seconds later. averna has been looking forward to meeting him for a long time as she details his plan and what he was going to do to her. They've met before. Transglobe Expedition. He witnessed murders and didn't do anything about it as she offers him a deal. He must retrieve files that Camille kept on everyone like Batman did to the Justice League members as these files showcase all the wrongdoings that each member of the family has done, including Pym himself. Now in return, he must give her something that he cares for, but we learn he has no wife, he has no kids, he's got nothing to give because he always saw those things as leverage. As we see, he declines and decides to play his own accords as she thanks him and she vanishes. As Lenore helps her grandfather to bed after his fall, she tells him that losing a company is good for him and he should let it go, as it is time for them to put the money they made to work for good. Sounds just like something Annabelle would say, T tells him that it's not too late to fix things, and as we're about to find out, this was the last word she says to him. To Lenore heading to bed and Verna is there waiting for her to complete the deal, as it's the whole bloodline. She tells her that moments like this do not bring her joy. She goes over this future where she tells her a story about how her mom will have a tough road of recovery ahead of her but she will endure it and she will actually inherit money from this whole fallout and she's going to actually do good with it. She'll start a non-for-profit and she names it after Lenore and saves a lot of lives. Ends up saving millions of lives and Lenore did all of this by saving her mother and in return she saved all those lives. As Vera touches her head and Lenore dies. As I was watching this moment, this is one of the moments that I got emotional because the actress as I'll talk about later that plays Lenore played this character with so much love and so much care and it was just such a sad moment. Let me know how you all felt about the death of Lenore. Rod tells Dupin how Lenore died and actually tells him who's been texting him all night as the whole time it's been the AI that Madeline was working on throughout the series and Lenore was the beta test and that's been texting him this whole time. She shows him the messages and we see it's never more typed out different times as Rod speaks the famous poem by Edgar Allan Poe, The Raven. We cut back to his home, we see Rod find Lenore's body as the Raven arrives, as does Lenore who whispers her own name. We see Rod drives to his real home, which is the Fortunato building, and he walks around the board table to meet his dead bloodline. We see Verna arrives and she shows him all the people he's killed. Every five minutes, someone dies from his drug as they fall and their bodies rain from the sky. As she tells him to set up the meeting we've been watching between him and Dupin. As we see Madeline arrive to see who's been in the basement this whole time, we see the siblings have been given a moment to talk before things end and you'll notice that Rod doesn't sip any of the drink that he poured for them. As the last few weeks he's been gathering all their important belongings to be buried like pharaohs. As they discuss what they've accomplished with this company, why she never had kids, how other companies and governments tear people apart every day, the playbook of men and women having children and passing down their traumas as she continues to drink up, it's them versus the world and death will have to look her straight in the eyes as she realizes he's messed with her drink and she passes out. As we see Rob preparing his sister's body like a goddess and a queen and he sets her 
her up for a tomb for the afterlife. But it appears he didn't make sure she actually died just like he did with their mother as we hear her coming up the stairs as we hear his truth. He knew deep down he knew that he would make it to the top over all the dead bodies and he has no regrets being the last usher standing. As Madeline makes her way up the stairs filled with rage and hate in her eyes which were replaced by those set fires he got for his sister for her birthday her tongue's now missing but she's still yelling with rage as she chokes her brother to death just like their mother did to their father in episode one. To me this conclusion to the sibling story was brilliant. I believe at one point when they were kids and maybe before killing Rufus they actually did love each other but after the greed took over I believe they cared more about the idea of someone loving them after all the things they did versus actually having pure simple love for one another. As the pen runs out, as the House of Usher falls to the ground, he sees exactly what Rod said he would, which is seeing the fall of this family, but also he sees the Raven. We end this finale with seeing Dupin taking down all the ushers from his board. As he's retired to spend time with his family, we see Juno inherited everything and completely dissolves the company and makes it a company for good. Meanwhile, Pim is arrested after those files were taken by the police as he sees Verna in the crowd. See Dupin visits the usher's grave as he leaves the truth and the confession by Rod at his headstone as he says that he can take this with him. As Dupin walks away as the richest man in the world because he still has his bloodline to spend time with, as the Raven stands over the tombstone and looks at him almost like a moment of reflection to value your loved ones because life is short and death is inevitable as he walks away. As we see the shape-shifting Verna leaving the Usher family material things that they valued more than human lives, the greedy things that ended up driving them to their deaths on each of their headstones. As we end seeing the literal fall of the House of Usher. This was a mini cinematic movie that was art. It felt like it was transcending TV storytelling. Now, of course, this final chapter was based on the legendary poem that many would say made Edgar Allan Poe a household name almost immediately after he published it. The story about a man who lost his love at Belor. A story that represents the grief of losing a loved one and the struggle to overcome it. As we saw Rod losing his family and struggling to overcome losing what he built, the nevermore meaning of not having again or never again. The Usher family killing and abusing the power never again because their bloodline is never more. As Verna the Raven represented an omen of bad luck, also evil and death, she was an ancient being filled with wisdom beyond human understanding. She was intelligent and she also had the ability to adapt and shapeshift as she also had the ability to offer corrupt individuals a sense to completely transform themselves, which a lot of them chose to do evil things with and it came at a cost. Now I'll personally have to sit with this series just a little bit longer longer to truly say that I believe that this might be Mike Flanagan's best work to date because I've spent more time and I've watched things like The Haunting on Hill House and Midnight Mass a little bit more and I also consider those to be masterpieces. But I can confidently say that this was one of my favorite experiences with a TV series this year. And I can also say without a question, this was one of the best finales and endings to a series that I've seen this year and honestly one of the best finales I've seen in a very long time. The detail and the precision from the direction and the writing in which the story was told was nothing short of masterful. The performances across the board were phenomenal, even though some of the characters' individual storylines sometimes felt that they were a little bit underwhelming, the performances were still top notch. Now my personal standouts being all the performances of Roderick, especially from Bruce Greenwood, what a behemoth of a performance. Madeline Usher, played by Willa Fitzgerald, was a force of nature, as was Mary McDonald. Augie Dupin, what an inspiring and brilliant performance by both Carl Lumley and Malcolm Goodwin. And I thought all the Usher kids were fantastic, but my personal favorite was Kate Siegel as Camille. Gotta love Mark Hamill as his cold and calculated approach to Pym was genius. I love the pureness in which Kylie Corinne brought to Lenore. Now I can go on and on about the supporting characters like Rufus who was an asshole, but what a great performance by that boss, and Annabelle, the pureness and the kindness from her. But I wanna end by saying this on the performances. I have been a fan of Carla Gugino for a long time and I've been following her career for a while and I love everything she's done with Mike Flanagan but her role as Verna aka the Raven might just be one of my all-time favorite performances of her great career. She played so many different roles and showed so much range from being nice and kind and caring to cold and terrifying. This was a literal perfect performance for me. Now I spoke on the story and the performances and the direction which was incredibly detailed. Let's talk a little bit about the scares. For me, in my personal taste, I found the Haunting on Hill House was more scarier 
but this was more brutal and gory and had some very effective jump scares. But again, to each his own, I just personally found the haunting on Hill House, and you know what I'm talking about, the bent neck lady, that still haunts my dreams. Now, if I had any criticisms, I mentioned it in my individual videos I did for each episode, but some of the characters I wish were more developed or we had more time with them to make it feel more impactful or emotional. For example, I love the fact that the two characters who were tortured the most, and I'm referring to Morelli and Juno, they were physically tortured a lot throughout the show as they were able to put good into the world and the performances worked, but I wish we would have had more time with them to really make their endings just hit more harder and feel more earned in my personal opinion. Now this isn't really a criticism, but selfishly I would have loved to have spent more time with the actual Usher family together before they all died. More scenes of them maybe being younger or of course with them being more adults because their chemistry to me was just so electric and fun and brought some great moments throughout this show. Overall, the fall of the House of Usher brilliantly connected the classic stories of Edgar Allan Poe and told this modern profound story about this greedy family who let their own selfish desires and dreams take over the parts of life that make you human and filled it with lust, drugs, power, and pain. This was an experience that had an incredible depth and showcased the corrupt nature of this family and was crafted by this genius and the master of horror and suspense and family drama by the name of Mike Flanagan. This concludes my journey of covering every episode of this incredible series. I would like to thank you all for watching this video and a special thanks to those that watched all seven previous breakdowns, which can be found in the description below and on the screen now. Consider hitting the like button if you enjoyed today's breakdown and recap and share this video as well as sharing your thoughts on this finale and this series as a whole. And if you like me have seen all the Mike Flanagan Netflix series, which is your favorite, let me know in the comments below. Consider subscribing today. You all are awesome. Stay safe and I'll catch you all on the next video.